I'm Rev. Rosemary Dawson, Interim Minister at the Athol Congregational Church. Welcome to Worship Online. We have no announcements this morning, so let us now enter into worship. The peace of Christ be with you all. For our call to worship this morning, our united response will be, Praise God for this amazing good news. We come again to celebrate the resurrection. God gives us new birth into a living hope. Praise God for this amazing good news. Death has no power over us. Christ goes before us in the love God offers. Praise God for this amazing good news. Jesus says to each of us, peace be with you. Draw near to receive life in Christ's name. Praise God for this amazing good news. Let us join together now in a spirit of prayer. Your Easter people come to praise you, amazing God. Your resurrection is real and your word is sure. And so in the midst of the times when we are uncertain and afraid, help us to rest in your promises. In the moments of loss and confusion, help us to trust in your guidance and care. Let us know today the presence of the risen Christ among us and send us into the world as messengers of your hope and servants of your loving care. We ask this in the name of the one who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hi kids. How's your week been? Are you feeling scared? Have you ever felt scared? You know a lot of people are scared right now, even grown-ups. What does being afraid feel like to you? Are you jumpy and jittery? Are you sleepless and cranky? Yeah, me too. And something else, sometimes I feel something funny here in my belly. It's kind of like this knot that I'm making. See, it's right like this. It gets all knotted up and it just doesn't seem to want to go away. Well, you know, when Jesus died on the cross, his friends were scared too. In fact, they were so scared that they locked themselves in their houses. But then something amazing happened. Jesus went, rose from the dead, and then he went to find his friends. And when he came into the room where they were staying, can you guess what he said? No, it was not boo. He said to them, peace be with you. He said that to them three times, peace to you. And then he breathed on them, and the Holy Spirit came and gave them peace. And all those knots in their belly, well, they just disappeared. And his friends were really, really happy to see Jesus. Well, when we have the jitters, when we're afraid, we can ask Jesus to come and help us because he promises his peace to us too. All you have to do is pray and ask him to come and give you his peace. And when you feel that peace, then share it with others too. Okay? Let us pray. Jesus, thank you for meeting your friends that first Easter and giving them peace instead of fear. Thank you for meeting us here today because we too want your peace. Thank you for helping us. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is taken from John chapter 20 verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus again said to them, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. 
If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the marks of the nails in his hands, and put my fingers in the marks of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your hand here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. May God bless us in the reading of his word. One of the really good things that's happened during this pandemic is the creative use of social media. This Easter, I received a link of the performance of the Alleluia Chorus with a hundred members from six continents, all recorded virtually from their homes. It was glorious. It made me want to join in and sing. Perhaps you too have heard Easter music this season where you've wanted to lift up your voices loud and strong because you know the truth of Christ's resurrection. But perhaps, especially this Easter season, you have not felt so jubilant or confident. That's okay too, because it's been a hard season, filled with illness and death, fear and sorrow. Remember then, that you are a disciple, much like those who gathered in the upper room on that first Easter day. They didn't wake up singing alleluias. They woke up in dread. They were confused, not confident. They were devastated, not delighted. They were looking into the deep abyss of death, not anticipating the glorious restoration. Such a reality was so far from their thoughts that they couldn't even recognize Jesus when he did appear. Mary thought Jesus was a gardener. On the road to Emmaus, the disciples thought that Jesus was a heedless stranger. At the Sea of Galilee, they didn't realize that it was Jesus standing on the beach. And the reports of those first women to see Jesus, the first eyewitnesses, seemed to the disciples, as Luke said, to be the rantings of disturbed women. The resurrection was just too hard to believe. So rather than the excitement of Easter, they were buttoned up in their houses. Doesn't that seem familiar? And the one feeling they all shared was fear. That's the most repeated word in the scriptural story of Easter. Not faith, but fear. The disciples were afraid. They locked themselves in the upper room because they were fearful of the very people who had Jesus crucified. Their hope for a new social, political, and religious order was shattered and they feared more reprisals and maybe even more death. And it is then, when they are locked up in fear, that Jesus comes into their midst and says the most extraordinary and incomprehensible thing, peace be with you. Yes, that was the traditional greeting of the times, but it was so much more. It was the promise of God. It was the promise of shalom, not just an absence of war, but a fullness of life. Jesus had offered them peace at the Last Supper. He had told his disciples that regardless of what threatened them in this world, they would share in his peace. But then the crucifixion happened, and there was no peace to be had. So now the risen Lord comes again, revealing the truth and the depth of his promise. When he says to his disciples, Peace be with you, not once, but three times, he is giving them what they need to claim God shalom for their lives. Peace be with you, Jesus says, for death has been defeated. He shows them the holes in his hands and his side, 
signs that this is his body, which was crucified. Yet he stands before them, breathing and speaking and wearing those marks of death like a victor's medal. Peace be with you, he says, for the bonds of sin are broken. He breathes his own life and his own purpose into them by the gift of the Holy Spirit. They will now share both his power and mission, offering to the world God's mercy and grace, a forgiveness that can wash away the old life and put a new life in its place. Peace be with you, he says, because I am here, just as you need me, just when you need me. Jesus comes to Thomas just where he is. In his pain and fear, struggles and doubt, Jesus shows up for him. With graciousness and a firmness, he speaks to Thomas and allows him to find his way to faith, to see and touch and believe. And then he invites each of us, wherever we are, in whatever way we need, to receive the blessing that comes with faith. That is the way that God has worked, the way God always works, God took the first step in creation, in redemption, and in glorification. God does not wait for us. God steps forward and offers us life, always. Just as Jesus didn't wait for the disciples to unlock the doors, just as he didn't wait for Thomas to stop doubting, Jesus just showed up and offered them his peace. That's what he did then. That's what he does now with us. He comes through the doors that are there and right into the middle of whatever problems there are. He comes and offers us the peace of God. Oh, we may be living behind closed doors today for the sake of prudence, but there may still be many ways that we can find ourselves locked up. It could be illness or unemployment, isolation or close quarters with families, it could be an uncertain, unimaginable future or the profound needs of the community today. It could be a social strain, political imprudence, or even religious expectations. But we find ourselves in a real bind. And we know, really know, just how much we long for resurrection life. Like Thomas, we ache for God to come through our locked doors into the middle of whatever stuff is ours and offer us peace. That is the hope and the promise of Christ's resurrection. Christ is alive, risen to new, eternal, powerful life, more powerful than anything in this world. And Christ is with us. Christ comes with saving grace and redeeming hope. Christ offers us peace. And Christ breathes new life into us through the gift of his Holy Spirit. We might or we might not know with any clarity exactly what will happen or precisely when it will happen, but we know it. In one way or another, we know that God is here. We know that God loves us. And we know that God will not abandon us ever. We know what it is like for Jesus to come through the locked doors and say those life-giving words, peace be with you. And so we can go through our days for good or bad, in fear and in hope, facing the challenges in our midst, caring for those in need, and proclaiming the good news of the resurrection because Christ is in our midst and we have peace. Don't you just want to sing? Amen. Okay.
Let us come together now in prayer. Gracious God, we come before you today, grateful for the good news that Jesus has risen from the dead. Thank you for coming among us, even in our worries and fears, and offering us the gift of your peace and the power of your spirit. As we find our hope and strength in you, help us to live as faithful witnesses to your goodness and compassion. And so we pray, O oh God, for your church throughout these days. Open our eyes, our ears, and our hearts that we may recognize you among us and receive the words that will strengthen us and empower us to serve the world you came to save. We pray for the world and all its leaders. Grant them your peace and guidance that they may find the way to care for all the peoples of this world. And we pray for all who are suffering. May they know your presence and care, your faithfulness and your peace. Grant your healing to the ill, your comfort to the mourning, and your provision to the needy. We especially pray for all who are dealing with the coronavirus. Grant to the medical staff continued health and strength, encouragement and hope as they serve the ill, and grant the researchers clear paths to effective treatments and vaccines. We pray for those who are ill, that they would know your presence and your healing, and we pray for those who have lost loved ones that your comfort and grace would surround them and support them. We pray also for all who are affected in other ways. Meet the needs of those without work and those who place themselves at risk as they do work. May those who are distressed find a depth of peace and those who are isolated know your living presence. Grant also your peace to families in close quarters and those who are separated from their support. We also lift up the needs of Arlene, Phil, Sue, Larry and his family, Leo and Nancy M, Kathy and Lewis, and all our concerns as we come before you now in the quiet of our hearts. We praise you, holy God, for the peace and hope, courage and power, which is ours through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Christ is present among us, filling us with peace and directing us to service. In these moments we can offer our thanks and praise to the God of our salvation, and we can witness to the power of new life and new hope to a world very much in need. Let us now give in faith. We would prefer that you send your gifts to the church office, but it's also possible for you to give through PayPal or through your bank's bill pay service. And you may go to our website for more information. Let us now join together in our offertory prayer. Wondrous God, we rejoice in the good news of Jesus Christ and we delight in the living presence of his spirit. Entrusted with the message of hope and peace, we seek now to share with the world the blessings we have come to know by your grace. Bless us and our offerings to your glorious purpose. Amen. Go now into the world, and may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing, so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope. Go in peace to love and serve our Lord. Amen. <laughs>